I really like this kind of old devices. And those are old Soviet digital clocks, Electronica 4. And this one comes from 1978. And it still works. It has a wooden box, a display. This is the bottom. It cost 70 rubles in 70s. It has a panel with buttons and a fuse. And here you can stick a battery into it for backup. And it still works. There's a reset button, button for minutes, hours and brightness switch. So when I press reset, it will reset to zeros. I can press minutes and it sets minutes. And I can press hours and it sets hours. And you are not pressing the buttons like this. You basically hold the button and wait for the number to get to the value you, you need. You can also hold both buttons at the same time to speed it up when you need. And there's a brightness selector, so it can have low or high brightness. And there's also a fuse. And the fuse is dated May 78. And I like how those old Soviet parts are always dated. And the value is 0.25 amps or 250 milliamps. And I always wonder why all those Soviet clocks have such a high value fuse in it. Because the clock really draws about 21 milliamps. So why there is a 250 milliamp fuse that's more than 10 times the current? Is it possible they didn't make any fuse with lower rating than this? I'm not sure. But it's a really nice clock. It smells like an old vacuum tube TV and it hums like a substation. And this one doesn't hum, this is silent. The plexiglass is very dirty from the inside, but it's okay because it's about 40 years old. And the buttons are quite worn, but as my grandfather always says, when something is worn, it means that people like to use it. Let's take a look what's inside. This one is still sealed, it hasn't been opened for about 40 years. This one accidentally is also from 78 and it still works quite well. And this one has to be cleaned, so let's open it up. It has four screws for a flat screwdriver because Soviets almost always used a flat screwdriver screws. Let's unplug the battery. And the battery is dated 1999. And this is the expiration, so the battery may have been made about in mid 90s. So this one comes through. And we can open it up. You can see the transform fuse. Some big resistors probably, buttons. And you can slide the board out. And that's it. It's really very dirty inside. Here you can see the vacuum fluorescent displays in a Nixie style bulbs and one separator here and this is the board it's really quite dirty there are eight CMOS chips some early Soviet CMOS ones and a lot of transistors each transistor is for one segment 
there's the crystal this also dated 78 and this one is probably a crystal oscillator and there are some counters there are base 10 and base 6 counters with direct 7 segment outputs those outputs go into the transistors for high voltage switching and it switches the segments of those tubes those tubes run at about 27 volts actually the anodes and grids are for 27 volts and the heaters are 1.5 volts surprisingly those capacitors are still not rotten still not dry here you can see four diodes making a bridge rectifier and this is probably a Zener diode for regulation those buttons are really big sturdy buttons and those are definitely not a cheap Chinese micro switches there is a calibration knob you can adjust the speed of the clock and those tubes are in socket so you can easily replace them when necessary and that's about it and this is a low frequency crystal 32 kilohertz 0.768 and this is a prescaler it divides the frequency of the crystal down to 1 hertz and there are base 6 and base 10 dividers and those divide the frequency down to one impulse per minute and it goes into the minutes here and there's another base 10 counter for this one and then base 6 counter for this one another base 10 counter for this one and some mechanism to reset it after 23 with some circuit with gates it's probably this one. Most of those ICs have a western equivalent, but the base 6 counter has none. There is absolutely no western equivalent to it. And those ICs are running at about 9 volts, and those transistors are switching 27 volts. And those are bipolar PNP transistors. And there's a transformer, and it has two secondaries and I think it is 27 volts and 1.5 volts for the filaments and the input of course is 220 volts 50 hertz and sometimes one of those transistors fails and then you have one segment here always on or always off and I really like this type of clock because it has no microcontroller it has just very primitive ICs and those individual tubes which look like Nixie tubes and some people actually call it Nixie tubes but those are actually early vacuum fluorescent displays and I really like this style because you can easily pull it out of the socket and put a new one into it and it also looks quite vintage there are some other versions of the clock with a flat display it's a flat vacuum fluorescent display panel and this one doesn't look so vintage and it's also hard to replace so I really like this oldest version of Soviet clocks and those tubes actually don't wear out so quickly as the flat panel and they seem to be all original all of them are dated 78 and each one looks a little different but they are really from the same date and I like the sound they make when you turn it on or off I'm not sure you can hear it, but it really makes a clicking sound as it heats up or cools down. And it works really well, so I just have to clean it and put it back together. This is Darugan Wild and see you in my next videos.